Hello friends, welcome to a very fun video. Today's video is going to be all about the romance books I would recommend with Valentine's Day coming up. I thought it'd be the perfect time to give like a master list of romance books. And I have them all here and they are about to fall, but here they all are. I also have some that I borrowed from the library that I don't have a physical copy of. So there is just a lot to get through. So I'm going to keep the description short and sweet most likely but let's just get into it. First, I need a sip of my beverage, which I have this Kavita Lemonade Peach flavored. All right, I also have two little sections, I guess you could say, and I have some young adult, more like wholesome reads, and then I have like adult, more spicy reads, I guess you could say, but I don't think I have them in any particular order, so I'll just go through them. I will just start with the top one here. Oh, also, I have a little change of scenery. I just kind of wanted to change things up a bit, I guess. So yeah, that's why I am sitting here. Let me start out with 7% of Roe Devereaux by Eleanor Clover. This is a book about a girl and she creates an app and basically the app is kind of like MASH. It tells you who your ideal partner is, like what your occupation is, how many kids you'll have and where you'll live. And the app, and when it goes viral, Ro kind of gets in the situation where she has to fake date the person that she would end up being matched with to kind of like promote the app. And so the person she ends up getting matched with is her ex-best friend Miller and they kind of get forced into this public fake dating thing and it, this one was just really interesting. I loved the way it was written. I can't believe this was her debut. It was just written very well, very unique, and it was very believable to me. I just was rooting for them the whole time and I just, I loved it. would highly recommend checking this one out. Before I move on, I also wanted to say that for me, I like there to be plot with my romance. So most of these, they are romances, but I feel like a decent bit of them have plot with them and they're not just straight like spice so yeah just wanted to get that out of the way next i have anna and the french kiss and this is one of the ya low contemporary romances that i was talking about and this follows anna she has to go to a boarding school in paris and there she meets etienne but he has taken this is one where there's romance but it also kind of has a storyline like obviously she'll be exploring paris and like navigating through school and friendships and all of that especially since she's a teenager and I, I really enjoyed this one. I read it a while ago, but it's definitely one I want to reread. And I just love the setting. And also I feel like Paris is the perfect setting for a book to read during Valentine's Day because that's a city of love. So would highly recommend this one. Next I have, I have the rest of the story here, but I would recommend any Sarah Dessen book. The, her books just encapsulate like summer romance, angsty teenage vibes perfectly and so that's why i would recommend any of her books this is one i read most recently it follows emma she goes to stay with her mom's side of the family and they live on the lake and so she works at the hotel that her family owns and she meets a boy obviously <laughs> and it just kind of follows that it's just a cute story between emma and rue and like family dynamics and like i said the summer vibe it was just a great read next i have the soulmate is creation by christina lauren this is kind of similar to 7% of Devereaux in that there's something that matches two people together and they're forced to like fake date and this one follows Jessica Davis she's a single mom and she gets matched with River. River is the CEO of Genetically and that is a service that matches people based on like their DNA and I really enjoyed it it's kind of like a grumpy sunshine it's very similar to the love hypothesis and there is also a second book coming out so I would highly recommend picking this one up especially if you enjoyed the love hypothesis. Next I have the cheat sheet this was my first read of the year and I love this one. It's a sports romance friends lovers between Nathan and Brie and wow a lot of these are fake dating now that I'm thinking about it. but basically this is about Brie and she has had feelings for Nathan like ever since they met and then one night she spills her guts to a TMZ reporter and the reporter records like the whole thing. Brie talks about her feelings and all that sort of stuff and the reporter obviously posts it the post goes viral and a lot of people want Brie and Nathan to get together. So it follows that situation and just kind of how they grapple with their feelings and their friendship and it was very wholesome. And I really enjoyed that Nathan and Brie had a foundation of friendship that made it even more <laughs> sweet to me. Next I have the wedding date. This follows Alexa and Drew and they meet in an elevator conveniently. Jake's in town for a wedding and they get stuck in the elevator that I mentioned and they kind of hit it off. And so Drew asks Alexa to go to the wedding with him to like be his fake date there and so it follows them but they end up catching 
feelings, I guess. And it follows them as they try to navigate through their relationship because he was only in town for the wedding. So they navigate through long distance and that sort of stuff. And I thought this one was really cute and I enjoyed it. So I think I may have one more fake dating, but that's almost all for the fake dating recommendations. Next I have The Summer of Brahma Rules. This is another young adult contemporary romance one. And this one was really cute and sweet. It kind of delves into some deeper topics though because the main character Meredith is dealing with the loss of her sister and every year they go to Martha's Vineyard but they hadn't been since Meredith's sister passed away. But they go this year for a wedding and every year the family plays a game of assassin and Meredith ends up teaming up with one of the groomsmen, Wit, and they end up kind of connecting and it follows them as they develop their relationship and also as they play the game. This one is just like, it is perfectly summery and fun for the most part. Like I said, there is the grief element to it, but overall it is just a very sweet read. Would highly recommend this one. Next. Betrayed, of course I have to recommend this. This follows January and Gus and they are both writers and they actually knew each other in college and they were kind of like, they didn't really like each other in college. And so many years pass and January goes to a house in Michigan where conveniently she finds out that Gus is the next door neighbor. And basically they get to talking and then they decide to come up with a little bet slash rivalry thing and they're like, Oh, I don't think you could write a book like I write. January writes romance and Gus writes more like literary fiction. So January kind of has to write a literary fiction and Gus has to write a romance and follows them. And part of the deal slash bet is that January has to take Gus on like little cutesy things to help him with his research. And then Gus takes January on things that he usually does to research his book. And it's just very cute, wholesome. This is probably my favorite romance book ever. And I know this one's pretty popular, but if you haven't read it, definitely read it. And if you have read it, now might be a good time for a reread. And then along with that, I have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is her friend's to lovers book and it follows Alex and Poppy and they have been friends since college and every year since they kind of met they've gone on a trip together. A few years ago something happened on their vacation that ultimately ended up to them not speaking again for a while and then someone asked Poppy when she was last happy and she realized it was with Alex so she convinces Alex to go on another vacation and truths are unleashed and things are said and they kind of just figure out what happened. I thought it was really cute. I love the travel aspect and I love Poppy. She is probably one of the most relatable characters that I have read about and I thought this one was very fun. Next I have The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hiswood. This is a fake dating and the girl wants to convince her friend that she is over her ex so that her friend can date her ex and so basically to do that she ends up randomly kissing this guy Adam and they end up fake dating and <laughs> it sounds kind of cheesy, I guess, but I don't know. Just when I first read it, it, it was on the level of Betrayed and I just really enjoyed it. I loved all the little things they had to do to convince Olive's friend that they she was dating Adam and I don't know. I just enjoyed it. This is one that's like, I hate everyone in the world but you, which I love in a book and so I would definitely recommend this one. Next, I have The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches and this one follows Mika and she grew up as a witch and she always had to be isolated because she thought that's what she had to do to keep her secret safe but then she gets invited to Nowhere House where there are three young witches who live together and she gets invited to train them. There's a found family aspect but there's also the grumpy sunshine romance aspect to it too. So while she's there she kind of has to win over the grumpy Jamie, he's the librarian, and I don't know. I just thought it was sweet because you also got to see the kid element to it and you got to see just how Jamie ended up really liking Mika and I don't know. It's just really sweet and fun and even though this seems kind of like witchy, I would still recommend it because it also has kind of like wintry vibes. So this would also be a good one to read whenever. Next I have The Summer I Turn Pretty, another young adult contemporary, but this follows Belly and she goes to her mom's friend's house every summer and that leads to her becoming friends with Jeremiah and Conrad. They are brothers and they end up being really close friends and basically Belly has been in love with Conrad forever and it kind of just follows her as she's like grown up and Conrad may see her differently and it follows that and like Belly gets involved with 
some other guys and she's just like in this whole love triangle square type of deal <laughs> i don't know if that makes it sound good or not but it is very good and it's the perfect summary book as well and i don't know i just enjoy books like this it just makes me very nostalgic which is always why i recommend this and i definitely think i would have liked it a lot more if i read it when i was younger but I still enjoyed it when I read it last year. Next, I have a season for Second Chances. This follows Annie and she just got divorced and she's really trying to figure out her life. So that is a main aspect of this book. But I do also think that the romance in this is also great. So that's why I am recommending this. But I do also think that the romance is more of a subplot in this one, I would say. But it follows Annie. She just got divorced and she's kind of like figuring out what she wants to do. She applies for a job where she can be like a tenant for this old woman's house that is on the sea. And basically the old woman, her nephew is kind of like grumpy and he wants to sell the lot. And Annie ends up really establishing herself there and she like opens up a coffee shop and everyone loves it and basically it kind of follows them it's kind of like a grumpy sunshine type of deal and i don't know if i explained that one really well i might read the back for you annie sharp's spark for life has fizzled out her kids are all grown up her restaurant is doing just fine on its own and her 26 year marriage has come to an unceremonious end untethered for the first time in her adult life she finds a winter guardian position in a historic seaside home and decides to leave her city life behind for a brand new beginning when she arrives in willow bay and is enamored by the charming home the invigorating sea breeze and the town's rich seasonal tradition. Not to mention her neighbors receive her with open arms that is all except for the surly nephew of the homeowner whose grand plans for the property are at odds with her residency. As Christmas approaches, tensions and tides rise in Willow Bay and Annie's future seems less and less certain. But with the low can-do spirit and holiday magic, the most difficult time of her life will become a season for second chances. So that's what this one is about. I would highly recommend it, especially if you like grumpy sunshine and kind of just like a cozy atmospheric type of book. Next I have Every Summer After and this is told in a then now format and it follows Percy and she has always went to a lake house every summer and it follows her kind of she's growing up there and how she kind of became friends and then eventually dated one of the neighbor boys and then something happened where they had a fallout and then they haven't spoken for 10 years until Percy gets a call that the neighbor boy's third mom passed away. So she goes racing back to Barry's Bay where the lake house is and ultimately Sam and Percy are forced to like deal with their past and so I enjoyed this one. I like that it was a second chance romance and that it takes place in summer and I just thought the descriptions were great and just the summery vibes and teenagey vibes were great. I think I kind of like the then portions just seeing Percy grow up and her development of her relationship with Sam but I also did enjoy the now part two seeing them have to figure things out for themselves again. Next is The Road Trip. I think this one is a very underrated book. I rarely ever see it talked about and I do think that people talk about her other book, The Flasher, but this one follows Addie and Dil Dylan and they met and fell in love four years ago and then they kind of, they also kind of had a falling out in this book and they haven't talked for a while until one day Addie crashes into Dylan's car and conveniently they're <laughs> heading to the same wedding. So they're like driving up to the wedding and they're forced to reconcile. This one also is told in a then now format by the way so it's like telling how Dylan and Addie fell in love and then how they're reconciling now and how they're kind of working through everything that happened so highly recommend it did take a bit of a darker turn but i still really enjoyed it and i do think this one is a bit underrated next i'll just talk about these two together and that is it happened with summer in hook line and sinker this one follows Piper and this is kind of a Schitt's Creek inspired book and it follows Piper and she's sent off to Westport, Washington, which is like a fishing village and there she meets Brendan. He's a fisherman. At first he doesn't like her. It's just your classic grumpy sunshine type of situation and it just follows them as they kind of form a friendship. That's all I'll say about that one. But I really enjoyed it. I loved reading about Piper. I mean, obviously she was inspired by Alexis from Schitt's Creek, so it was very much like that, which is part of the reason why I loved this one so much. And then we have Hook, Line, and Seeker, which follows Piper's sister, Hannah, 
and I thought Hannah was very relatable. She's kind of like quiet and like she really needs to learn how to be the main character of her own life, which she does in this book. And when Piper was in Westport, Hannah would come visit her. She ultimately struck up a friendship with Brandon's friend, Fox. And so basically it's kind of like a friends to lovers trope. And I really enjoyed it. I think I might have liked this one a little bit more than it happened with Summer. Just because I thought Hannah was more relatable to me. But overall, I would highly recommend both of them. They were both really cute and fun and next I have the deal series this is a group of hockey romances and it follows a group of friends every book in the series follows a group of friends and then the last book is kind of like an epilogue novel and I just loved the story I loved their found family and I loved the romances and all of these if you asked me to pick a favorite boy <laughs> I would not be able to just because I love them all because they were also different and great in their own way I guess but the first one follows Hannah and Garrett and Garrett is not doing well in his classes and he needs to start doing well to be able to play hockey so he realizes that Hannah is good at that class and so he wants her to tutor her and he decides to fake date her to make the guy she actually likes jealous and then ultimately stuff happens to where Hannah the main girl she does end up liking the other guy and she ends up liking Garrett <laughs> and I just thought it was really cute all of the books are and these were just definitely a fun quick romance series to read. Next I want to talk about Dream On by Angie Hockman. I read this one in January and it follows Cass and she was in a really bad car accident and she wakes up with memories of a guy named Devin Bloom who doesn't exist and eventually she's kind of moving on with her life but she still can't get this guy out of her head but eventually one day she runs into him and basically they strike up a romance and this one it took a turn for from what I was expecting and I ended up kind of being obsessed with it and it's definitely one of the best books I've read so far this year and I really enjoyed it. I really liked the turn it ended up taking and I thought the ending was really great and yeah I just love this one and also the cover is beautiful. I kind of want to own my own copy to be honest. And then last book I want to recommend is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. This is another second chance romance and it follows Leo and Lily. They fell in love early originally like 10 years ago on Lily's ranch and something happened where Leo had to leave really quickly and they ended up parting on bad terms but then 10 years later Leo goes to Lily's adventure company and he's with a group of friends and Lily's like leading them on this adventure and so they're kind of forced to reconcile and figure out what happened and figure out what went wrong I guess and how they want to move forward and I really like this one it's my favorite Christina Lauren I've read so far and I like this one because of the adventure aspect to it I just thought it was a unique thing that they have not done before I enjoyed that they took it down that route and I hope they write more books like that because I really enjoyed it that is going to be it for this video I'm hoping you all got a lot of book recommendations and I hope you all try some of these out and hopefully you enjoy them or if you have read some of them hopefully you maybe want to give them a reread comment down below your favorite favorite romance books and if you enjoyed this video give it a like and if you want to see more from me subscribe and I will see you all with another video soon.